So today we're going to talk about how you can send use the Kafka API in Azure Event Hubs. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to use the Kafka Appender for Log4j. So this is basically you can route your logs. We actually did this in a previous do 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 in a previous one where you could actually uh, route your logs to different topics in Kafka, right? The same way you would route them to different disk drives or other outputs. And so we have a project that shows that. If we come down here, you can see in this case, the Azure Event Hubs has a Kafka compatible API. And so that means um, that we actually don't have to make any changes. So in theory, these Kafka appenders should work for Azure Event Hubs. And remember, you're limited on the number of ad hub hubs per events for namespace and all that based on how you provision it. But for this purposes, I wanted to gather the logs from an application and I wanted them to go into Azure event hubs instead of into Kafka. So I could do a SaaS, you know, kind of thing with no, you know, I didn't want to have to stand any servers up or anything. So in this case, um, actually, I'm going to show you that we previously had a env.properties file for a spring app to confirm. Um, and these properties are basically just bound in through the log for JJX XML. I'll show you that. So what is in red is what the property had for audit, I mean, for uh, Kafka, right? So for Kafka, the big two were bootstrap servers and that's it. It was the bootstrap servers, right? And then everything else was related to what the topic names were. So the only thing we needed before to do an unauthenticated um, sign in to our Kafka, local Kafka was basically set the bootstrap servers. And now we actually set the bootstrap servers and we set the security protocol because and we give it a config with the username and password. And you can see here, it's actually exactly this string, except with your namespace here and your key there. And you can actually find that in the portal. I'll show you where. And the only changes we had to make to the log4j XML. So this is the log4j XML that basically configures Kafka, you to log to Kafka through the Kafka appender. And the only thing you needed to add it were these three properties, right? So we added three properties here, the uh, security protocol, the SASL mechanism and the SASL jazz config. And so we just basically needed to take those three things from the NV properties and pass them in by parameter. We're going to do it ENV, bundle the EN, from the ENV, uh, and that means we're going to get it from ENV.properties, and we're going to pull in those variables that were set in those files. And then I did it twice because I had two appenders. So that's it. To make Azure Event Hubs be your Kafka sync, Kafka compatible sync with no code changes with Log4j to XML, um, basically all you have to do is define the properties as defined in their documentation. And then the magic for making this work for log4j to XML is log4j basically is you just add those parameters as bound in properties because log4j knows to look for those properties when it's got to do a secure send. And uh, the log4j uh, Kafka appender knows to look for those uh, properties. You can see that we uh, just bind them in, right? And I think, and that's it. So let me see what I got here. This is actually the repo it's in, Freeman Soft Spring to Boot Log to Kafka example. And you can see that um, it is actually in the feature branch in the Event Hub Sync feature branch. So if you go to this repo and you grab the feature Event Hubs, uh, Event Hub Sync branch, then it is exactly the same thing that would have worked for Kafka, except it's got this properties file and you're good to go. And I can show you this a little bit. So here I have, I'm running Event Hub Explorer um, and it's actually Service Bus Explorer. It works for Event Hubs too, because under there seems to be some Service Bus compatibility there. So this, what I'm looking at here is, this is my Event Hub, the Freeman Soft example Event Hub. And I had a couple topics as part of the example. I just created a Kafka, I'm sorry, an event hub topic with Kafka enabled, uh, compatibility enabled, which is the default. And we can see that there are currently uh, 175, although they aged out. I think I have one day aging on this. So today I generated 63 messages, right? I had started at an offset of 112, you can't see it, but and it ends at 175. 
and I don't know how to make that bigger because the font thing doesn't do any different on that one. So that's it. Emma, you're going to have to trust me. It's at 112, start off at 175. I'm actually going to come over here to Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to run the sample program. And so it's just going to log out messages for 10 seconds. And then there's going to be 10 seconds worth of the audit messages and then some other random log messages. Anything here that says like, hey, we're starting, we're ending, we've got an error, those will end up in there. So if we cut, while that thing ran, if we remember, we came over here, we said start sequence was 112, the end sequence was 175. If we would take an action and we refresh the partition, we end up starting at 112 and ending at 191. So that's 175 to 191. What is that? 15, 16. So we generated 16 log messages when we ran that program. So totally cool. And you can see this in event hubs if you go to your namespace and we go to our hubs. Actually, you know what? If we went back to the overview, you can actually see where we had generated traffic here in the last hour, right? Actually, it's, so you can see there's some kinds of requests in here. Um, and what I'm actually going to do here is uh, go to I'll do this differently. We're going to go in here. We're going to go to the event hubs. If this doesn't work, I'll just edit it out of the video. And I'm going to pick the log event hub. And it turns out that we can see the activity in here, right? So. This is the messages I just generated and it came in and we can see how many messages there were in the last hour. And um, the only other thing I think I was gonna do here is if I look at the metrics for this itself. Oh yeah. So if we wanted to do this, we can actually see the event hub standard metrics. We're gonna get messages. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna make this bigger. We're going to um, look for incoming messages right here. And we can see that we brought in some incoming messages. And what I'm going to do, it's 20 something. And that's because there were 16 log messages and something audit, maybe 10 audit messages. So I'm actually going to create a split on this. This is basically, it looks like an app insight thing. And we're going to split based on the entity name and the two entities are log and audit. And you can see here, uh, that there's a certain number of audit messages in red and a certain number of log messages, which there are more of because there's the 10 log messages plus whatever set up and tear down log messages there were. And why can't I make this bigger? I don't know. Can I make it bigger? Nope. Maybe. Yeah. So you can see here that we have red and blue in here. And so that was it. We ran this sample program. Oops. Yeah. This sample program. Oh, we don't know what we're doing. We ran this sample program, Freeman Soft, Spring Boot Log Kafka example. You hop in on the event hub sync branch. And when you run that, uh, you just have to set the variable, the values correctly in this environment.properties for a namespace you've created. And you'll pick up the config string, which you can find. Oh, I can show you that too, even. We can do, you know what? I'm not going to do that. Oh, shared access policies. Click on that. And then you can actually see here, it would be the connection string will be what's right here, the connection string primary key or this connection string secondary key. And that's all you got to do. I hope that was useful. The goal here is to be able to use the log for j Kafka appenders to send information to Azure event hubs with no changes. And it gives you how an idea for the simple API anyway, how compatible Azure Event Hubs is with Kafka API. Have a great day.